Welcome to The Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Hi, podcast listeners. This is Mike McCallum from Grass Shack Events and Media, a corporate meetings production company and full-service video production company. Uh, also from AV for Planners, which is a audiovisual vetting company. So make sure you vet your AV, get the right equipment and labor for your next meeting. Wanted to thank our sponsors uh, today. Our sponsors are 99designs. 99designs is a, um, a great company online that you can use. It, it, it's designers from all over the world will um, work on your whatever kind of graphic uh, project you have going on. They'll send you sketches and mock-ups of your logo or your project for your business or whatever you're doing. Um, I have a production company. Obviously, we do a lot of graphic work, but if you really want to do get some stuff that you don't need a production company for, why not use 99designs? Um, so you can get, you can go on there, open up an account, put a project in. Like I said, designers from all over the world will send you sketches and mock-ups, and then you just choose which is your favorite, and then you work with that one designer to make it perfect. That's it. You don't have to you know, you don't have to use any of them, really. You can get your money back if you don't want any of them, uh, any of the designs at all. But it's a great little thing to check out. And you could go to 99designs is the um, website. If you want to help out the show, go to tinyurl.com backward slash meetings 99. And the reason I have that is that the uh, affiliate code they gave me was like three pages long. So um, tinyurl dot com backward slash meetings 99 and they'll have a special for you there also wanted to thank uh our sponsor audible trial.com uh audible is the audio books um i listen to a lot of audio books doing yard work running around i love it because i can read a book while doing something else so i can work in the yard i can um go for a walk i can go to the gym and listen to a book so i'm killing two birds that's what i love to do um if you want a free audiobook and give it a trial you go to audibletrial.com backward slash meetings podcast and uh recommending a book uh right now let's see i finished boys in the book boys in the boat uh, which is a fantastic book if you want a fun book. Uh, I heard Martian is a great one. I that's the one I'm starting now. So it's out right now with Matt Damon, the movie, but I hear the book is a fantastic. So I'm going to get started with that one. Just some tips if you want. So again, you can go to audibletrial.com backward slash meetings podcast. Um, today's show, we have Eric Rosenberg from Swanergy. He is a fantastic guy. Um, I've met him a couple of times in person at different events, and it was really nice to sit down and chat with him. He's out in Florida, uh, so I will let you get on. We'll let you start listening to the show, and I will get back at the end to fill in any gaps. Thank you so much, and enjoy the interview. Welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. This is Mike McAllen with Grass Shack Events and Media and AV for Planners. And today's show, we have Eric Rosenberg. Hi, Eric. Good morning. Uh, we did it. We are now talking together. It's very exciting. And wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to read a quick bio about you so people know who you are if they don't know who you are. Um, you yeah. are an entrepreneur who specializes in strategy, execution, and helping organizations increase their business performances. Um, you are the president of Swanergy? Swanergy, yep. Swanergy, an event and communication energy agency he founded in 1996. He also brings a fresh and new approach to strategic and customers advisory boards. For almost 20 years, Eric has been traveling the world, running projects in more than 50 countries worldwide, and consulting for Fortune 500 companies across many different industries. He holds several degrees from Warco Wakoi? <laughs> That's in Belgium. It's a Warwickshire Business School. Never mind. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. I'm it's very a long sorry. time ago. Never mind. <laughs> you speak several languages. Obviously, I don't, um, and hence your accent. Um, you are a regular writer and speaker. You served as chairman of the International Board of Directors of MPI. That's uh, Media Professionals International, and the first ever from outside North America. He currently serves as a volunteer in the IAEE uh, International Committee and in the... De, 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 de for 
the Parkinson's yeah. Parkinson's Foundation. He lives yeah. in South Florida between Miami and Fort Lauderdale airports, which is very convenient. Um, so what is uh, Dersamel Der for Parkinson's? What's Dersamel? Sorry. Oh, Dersamel is, is a very good friend of mine um, who was uh, diagnosed with uh, Parkinson when he turned 40. Ooh. And uh, Patrick, being uh, an amazing person and a fighter, I uh, was uh, at the helm of Bain and Company in Belgium, and his wife Anne Marie, where I was uh, also in the, in the board of uh, Alliance. Uh, and they, uh, long story short, they both resigned from their own company. They started a training company and a charity. And the training company is uh, really about aligning people. And, uh, and, and they have uh, one capsule which is talking about uh, remaining positive in life. And when you hear them talking about it, that uh, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And uh, and also they have a charity which I actually is uh, uh, officially a partner of the uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation there in Europe. And uh, very cool. Very I, I moved two years ago uh, to the U.S. with my family, and uh, that's one of the things I uh, enjoy uh, I, uh, giving more time for them, and I'm very honored that they asked me to do that for them. That's a very cool. All right, so let's get started. Do now people know who you are? Which a lot—I'm sure most people do know who you are because I remember first seeing you on stage at MPI, and it was like I think one of the very first MPIs I went to. Okay. Because I—I only—I worked in the production business for a long time, but we—I never went mm-hmm. to any of the association stuff until I started my own company. Um, right. And that's where I first saw you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad, but there's no, no, it was good. You're, fair, about it, so. you're very good. You're very good on stage. I have to. I'll give you that. You're very good. Very comfortable and uh, and and engaging. So thank let's you. start this up. So tell me your favorite quote. Uh, my favorite quote. And then uh, why? Why is your favorite quote? Yeah. Well, if I tell you that my uh, Twitter handle is Yoda eighteen, uh-huh. you won't you won't be surprised that my favorite quote is uh, "Do or do not. There is no try." <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I had discussion with people about that quote, and uh, oh no, you should try. And so that's not the purpose. To, to me, that quote is um, it's you have to be hundred percent committed. And when you start with uh, try, there's a kind of already there's an opportunity for not succeeding, and not you're not hundred percent committed. So that's what I like. You do it or you don't. But if you do it, you do it uh, fully. Right. That's a great one. Really great one. So, so how'd you get into the how'd you get into this whole crazy event industry? Um, for a lot of people in my generation, by by a pure coincidence, um, I studied business. Uh, I was uh, developing the marketing department of a stockbroker company, and then during uh, ski holidays, I met uh, people that were in that industry, which I've never heard of. But having been very involved in ISEC, which is a business uh, student organization, which is doing a lot of congresses as well. I thought, oh my God, this is this is amazing. Um, I love to do that, and I uh, resigned from the stockbroker company, and get into partnership, didn't work out. And uh, back in nineteen ninety six, uh, I was almost twenty nine. I decided to to start my own company. Very cool. And uh, so, in that path, uh, what made you what made you really think that you had uh, that it was the right decision? Was there, like um, a, was there like an aha moment, you know, where you said, oh. It was. It was, it was really my guts. And quite frankly, at that time, we're talking about back in 1996, with uh, this degree and everything, people saying, what? After what you study, you're going to do what? And I said, yeah, I, I know that's what I want to do. I feel that's what I want to do. And I jump into it. And since then, uh, loving it. And as a business owner also, what was the biggest challenge that you encountered taking this whole flip over? Was What was the biggest thing that, that, that was your challenge? Uh, you can ask anybody in our industry. There's a challenge in every event and every program. <laughs> Nothing has ever uh, happened the way it was planned. One of the, the biggest uh, work challenges, I think, was uh, back in 1998 when... Uh, one of our clients, which uh, was Café de Colombia, Juan Valdez in Europe, mm-hmm. asked us to uh, uh, plan something for the semifinal and the final of the World Cup. And this was like two months <laughs> before oh, uh, the dates. So we got tickets and I quickly realized that uh, the, the person who had sold us the ticket uh, was lying. Um, and so... It was a month during which I went to every single person I know 
in Belgium and France. Um, um, there's so many, so many people we met at that moment. And long story short, we found uh, the tickets for the the client, and uh, the uh, the crook was forced to uh, give us some uh, crap ticket, which would have never been good for the client anyway. Uh-huh. Um, and so, at the end of the day, we were able to uh, to make it. We we're able to also uh, give our client extra uh, the attendance to the three tenors concert, um, and. Uh, it was. It was really anything could go wrong. It will. And at the end, we were two agencies uh, back at that time in Belgium that were able to deliver everything. And I think the cherry on the cake was uh, on the Friday. Um, there was the 10th of July, 1998. We had uh, the three tennis concert, and we were going back. And the president in Europe of uh, Cafe de Colombia told me that they had to uh, to have uh, a reception at the the consul uh, the consulate. At two thirty on Sunday, I said it's impossible. We have to be at four o'clock at the the Stade de France. Is the final and France is playing? That there's no way we can get there on time. And he said, "I no no choice. Uh, I have to do it." So uh, again, start calling people, uh, leveraging your network. And um, when we get out of the consulate, uh, we had uh, a motorcade of uh, um, Renault Espace, and after five minutes, we had the police escort. Managed to get the police escort. <laughs> we crossed Paris, uh, and uh, on on the other side, uh, everything everybody was blocked. And uh, in twenty minutes, we get to the Stade de France. It was just amazing. Holy moly, that's a yeah, nail, exactly. nail biter. Uh, and I still have everything. I mean, the tickets, the the program, the the, the newspaper article saying how many false tickets they were. It was just crazy. Oh man. So let's say someone's listening that's just getting into the business and, and wants to start their own business. And what was the biggest like challenge for you just starting your business? Like what, what, what really jumps out at you to say that maybe I could have done something a little bit differently or, or an example like that? Yeah, it's, it's always the balance between what you can learn working with other people and then uh, taking responsibilities yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so that. The, the very first thing, and I've seen it, whether it's people that are starting their own business at the end of their, their studies or uh, people leaving a uh, big corporation to start their, their own company, it's the solitude. The fact that suddenly uh, you're on your own. Uh, so in the morning, you go uh, to uh, the, the client to speak with the, the CEO of the company. And, uh, and just afterwards, you're going to Costco because you need uh, paper. Uh, <laughs> And, and you do that. That's so true. So true. <laughs> which, which is fun at the beginning, but if you're not aware of it and if you don't put system in place where you regularly go out uh, and, and meet people and leverage uh, the network you have to work and create a team immediately, um, you, you can get depressed at some time. So that, that's something uh, that I would remember. And so that's really good advice. Really good advice. And, and how do you do that? So how, how are you... Um, how are you? Are you? Do you go to like meetups and stuff to kind of to let, to get to meet more people, or is it more going just the association? Yeah, definitely the association. Yeah. Uh, so th- joining, that's joining the, them like MPI and absolutely. Um, th- that is something, and this is the same old story, but it's true. Uh, depends how much you put in, but you get much more. Yeah, and that's one thing. The other thing is really having in your calendar the fact that two or three days per week, you're going to go out. You're going to go and, and discuss business or, or meet people, uh, just making sure that uh, you're not staying alone uh, in, in your home from the morning till the evening. And then you get involved, you volunteer uh, in some project. And it might not have to be, it doesn't have to be in your own business. Uh, it's just something that gives meaning to, to what you do that you like. And that is how you, you get the balance. Uh, and of course, afterwards, uh, as soon as you can, you work with other people, you hire people, uh, and it's really being conscious that uh, alone you can do nothing, but if you don't plan for it, then you're going to stay uh, on your own, and then, you, you, again, you, you might get depressed with that. Yeah, very good, very good, very good advice. Um, so, kind of, so someone who's just learning about you, take us, take us through a day of, like, your current business, like, what, what, do you, what do you do, like, I mean, what's it look like for your day? So, like, let's say someone hires you. What's the process that they would go through, and what should they expect? Um, in, 
hire me in terms of what? And well, for, hire your for, company. Uh, hire your company. I just I want people oh, to know, okay. you know, if someone wants to hire you too, that's always a good thing. Um, that they find you through this podcast is fantastic. But also, me, you might be able to help someone who's who's listening. So it's kind of sure. good to know, hear your process. Well, the the first thing um, I would like to do is to sit down with people and understand their needs. Uh, what are the challenges? What are they trying to achieve? Uh, in the future, and I'm talking about the next two, three years, and what is the the strategy that I want to put in place. And we're not management consultant. We're not going to have an opinion whether it's good or bad. We just want to understand why uh, they're doing what they're doing and where they want to go. And at that moment, whether it's it's for uh, an advisory board or it's for a sales meeting or it's for an incentive trip, uh, it doesn't matter. It's always the same thing. One, what is it that they want to achieve? Why are they doing it? Second, what do they expect from that face-to-face? What do they expect if they bring the customer? What do they uh, expect if they bring their team? What would success look like during that face-to-face? And how are we going to measure that? And only then we're going to talk about the processes, the logistics, uh, what could be happening, the design of the meeting and everything. And, of course, come back with the budget um, and really taking responsibility to stay in the budget from the moment we work together and we, do, we have agreed on, on everything. But it's always coming back to why are you doing this? Mm-hmm. And so what is important for us is to work with people that really see us as a partner um, and that are absolutely comfortable if we ask questions like, you told us you wanted to do this in 2018 and now you're going to do that, which is great, but what is the link between the two? I just don't understand. Right. Does that make sense? Total, total sense. And so, what do you, what, what's your, what are you looking to the future? What's the future look like for you? Is this, is there, um, um, something, some project or something that where you're headed? It's really two direction. The first one is, um, as uh, I said earlier, the customer advisory board, and not only facilitating. I mean, there's a lot of people that can facilitate and facilitate well, but it's also how can we leverage. The network we have, uh, and not only in the United States, but also uh, all over the world. How can we leverage the experience we have having worked for different type of companies, different type of organization and different industries and helping uh, our client? And that's the, the first part is really the consultancy, if you want, helping people with customer advisory board, helping people that are dealing with international, whether it's uh, um, people coming to the U.S. or companies that are going abroad. And the second thing, um, and the main important uh, point for us in terms of uh, meetings and events, if you look how sales meeting and incentive trip are organized today, and if you look at how much companies are spending, um, I just don't understand. They're spending sometimes so much money without even knowing and why they want to do that. Or what happened is that in the execution process, they don't see that at the end of the day, there are too many people involved in the chain of command. And not only is that nobody's responsible, but there's so many people involved that it could be done with much less budget and much more important, they can be done with a purpose. Yeah. If, you don't, if you do an incentive trip and you don't have moments where people are experiencing amazing experience that they cannot duplicate themselves if they go back with their family or with their friends, then you're not doing an incentive trip. You're, you're doing a nice group travel doesn't have the same impact, and, and basically uh, you're wasting a lot of uh, your investment in that. And you're not going to reach the impact you can have by really creating unique moments. Right. Very cool. So take, take, me, take me through a typical day for Eric. What, um, you know, I, I try to ask this question just to find out, you know, for other people, again, listening, saying, you know, maybe they can gleam something that you do that they, they could add to their own retrepoir. Is that the right mm-hmm. word, retrepoir? Retrepoir. <laughs> add to their <laughs> add to their own day to repertoire uh, in French maybe yes yes that's it that's it you know so they could add it so you know do you have like morning rituals do you have like foods exercise are there things in the morning you immediately look at it the, on the web um, take us through kind of I mean you don't have to show everything tell us everything but um, you know kind of what are there some things that you do in the mornings yeah the first thing I, I stop doing is opening my email when I wake up. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't do that. Um, and uh, I started um, three over, over three, four years ago starting to meditate. And now we're doing it, I do it regularly every morning, 10, 15 minutes. 
And if there's uh, one one important thing that I want to share with the, the people listening, uh, it's an amazing book that I, I read a few months ago that I'm now applying, and it's called The Miracle Morning uh, from Hal Erold. Uh-huh. And it's, it's basically is the, the acronym SAVERS. S is for silence or meditation, and I do that 10, 15 minutes. A is for affirmation, and you write their, your own affirmation and you repeat them. V is for visualization. What is it that you're looking at and what is it that where you want to go? E is for exercise. R is for reading. And S is for scribing, is writing. So Very in cool. a perfect day, you would do everything, 10, 15 minutes each or more, depending on the time you have, and waking up earlier to do that. In reality, I try to do that every day. I just don't do all those things in one morning, mm-hmm. but I'm getting there and, and I'm really excited uh, with that because it gives a lot of energy and a lot of focus. And afterwards, then you open the email, but it's always, it can always wait. That, you know, it's, it's funny that you say, I do the same thing. I meditate every morning too. And the people that I've talked to, it seems like so many successful people meditate nowadays just to clear their minds. It's interesting. It, it, it's exactly, exactly that. It's clearing your mind. It's focusing, and uh, as soon as you open the phone, then <laughs> you're back in uh, the the world and uh, all the, the stress and everything that's happening. So it can always wait a little bit. Um, and the day I don't meditate, I, I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. Same here, same here. So, and what was the book's name again? One more time, sorry. Uh, the Miracle Morning. The Miracle Morning, okay. From Hal Errol. Because that was going to be one of my questions, is what what's the book you gift most people? Um and that sounds like that's the books you're giving out to people. Uh, that's one. The, the other one uh, that I, I've been giving away a lot the last month is uh, a, a book called Winner's Dream from Bill McDermott. Mm-hmm. Bill um, is now the, the, the CEO of SAP. And in the book, he's telling stories about his life, which is very well taught and, and, and very enjoyable to read. But most importantly for me, he's the best advocate of our industry today. He's explaining how, when he was at, at Xerox or now uh, with SAP, how he's using meetings and events and face-to-face uh, to basically increase the business performance of the company he's running. And it's just amazing the example he's giving. Um, I know you, you are doing the podcast for IMAX. He came to IMAX in Frankfurt and, and spoke there. It was just amazing. And my good friend... Uh, Kevin Olson uh, was able to uh, arrange this uh, this whole interaction because he works for uh, for Bill for many years. And when you see people like that with such an impact, we're always talking about meetings, mean business, and the impact we can have. This is our best advocate, and everybody should read his book. Oh, very. And cool. I had no personal interest. <laughs> Very cool. No, that's great. Great, great, great. And so what other what other kinds of things? Do you, do you listen to podcasts or um, do you have favorite like websites that you go to? That for It doesn't necessarily have to be about meetings, too. Do you have something that you really enjoy going to that helps you? Uh, I, I listen to a lot of different type of music. I go to different websites. Uh, I read a lot about uh, geopolitics that has nothing to do with our industry, although it has to do with our industry. Um, and there's some website on that uh, in French that I'm reading. Um, and it's really uh, more on, uh, believe it or not, on Facebook, I'm following some people uh, that I trust. And those people are always publishing good link. And so I go to those links. And, and that's, uh, that's what I do uh, almost every day. Very cool. And so what did you want to be as a kid? You know, it's, it's, it's a good question. I don't remember. <laughs> I I don't remember. I I I I just don't remember. I guess like all the kids, I wanted to be a fireman or a cop or, um, and then when I was a teenager, I remember then said I want to do business and I want to travel. That that's what I remember. Mm-hmm. But there was nothing specific that this is what I want to do in my life. You wanted to be a football player or. <laughs> uh, I actually, I actually play football, the real football, the American football. Yeah. When when I was in Belgium, I, I did play for oh, a year. Did you? I was in sign linebacker. I loved it. How funny! That's yeah. great. Um, here's a question. So, if you could time travel, where would you go and why? Um, 
in the future, maybe. No, I, I, I <laughs> be good. I, I, yeah, I, I actually love our time here. Uh, I think with uh, all this new technology, what it allows you to do, um, I, I really like uh, our the the timing we're leaving. Even if there's a lot of issues, mm-hmm. but there's there's no period of time that I oh I wish I would have been living, I don't know, in, in the middle age or no, mm-hmm. no, no, not really. So, um, have you ever had a nickname? I had. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to share? Uh, so, uh, well, <laughs> my family name is Rosenberg, uh-huh. so that they couldn't pronounce it, so it became Rosie. Oh, Rosie. That's right. cool. <laughs> and um, so, okay, so tell me the best advice you ever received. One of the best advice I've ever received was um, prepare the backup. And it was um, some years ago uh, with one of uh, the person who's a, a, a board member in my company in Belgium. And uh, we were talking about the situation and uh, what was going on in the future. And I was sharing with him uh, my concern for my family and my little kids. And uh, he said, you know, uh, I understand what you're saying and uh, you should prepare the backup. But you never know. And... Uh, well, that's what we did, and uh, two and a half years ago, we moved to the United States of America. Nice. So, what is something that's working for you right now? Like, do you have a new app on your phone, or are you taking a new vitamin? Um, sounds like you're you're exercising with part of your um, part of your morning, um, or a time saver or something. Do you have something you you that really works for you right now? Well, I, uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to be very original, but uh, the iWatch works for me very well. Oh, yeah. Especially when I'm at the trade show. Because if, if I'm at the trade show, and let's say we have to meet um, at 3 o'clock, and it's 2.45, and I meet somebody on the trade show, start talking, then my phone's going to ring. It's going to remind me that uh, you and I are meeting at 3 or that, we have to, uh, that I have to call you at 3, but I don't hear my phone in my suit. So the watch start uh, buzzing, and then I, oh, I have to see Mike now, so I, I have to go. That's really interesting, and and because I've I haven't really heard any. I I've heard people really love it, but that's a, that's a good application for it. Is it is that the main one that you like? Because I guess you don't have to pull out your phone too. You can just look at your wrist. No, it's just like absolutely, and the same if if you're calling me, um, my phone my ring in my pocket, but I don't hear it because of all the noise around us. Uh-huh. Uh, and again, the the watch uh, showing me who's calling, which is great. Um, and there's also the other app, which is linked to uh, um, the, uh, I don't know the word in English, when you wait yourself uh, in the morning in your bathroom, there's a machine for that. What's the name of it? An alarm clock? Uh, no, no, a, a ba- um, no, no you, you just go on it and to, to, w- to see how much you wait. Oh, 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 yeah, like a scale. A scale. Thank you very much. That's the word <laughs> I was looking for. So the scale uh, is linked, uh, and there's an app, and it's linked to... Uh, to the watch, so you, you could see uh, and how you're progressing, and especially when you're traveling, you look at what was the last one. Is that oh, you have to keep with that? So yeah, how funny! That's great. Um, so, what's your favorite industry event to attend, and why? And why do you like going to it? Uh, there's there's actually many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I like going to the uh, the association meetings uh, because um, I'm, I'm meeting. People I know, I'm meeting new people, but I'm also learning. Every time I go, I'm learning something of the conversation. Um, in terms of event as such, are you talking about the also concert or? Uh, it could be anything, really. I mean, I, I like to hear the industry one, but if you would, is there something else? It could be anything. I remember the concert of Leonard Cohen in Barcelona. It was magic. Huh. I remember that because it was a Monday. On the Friday, he was singing in Valencia and. Uh, Actually, he didn't fell well, and after the third song, he was rushed to the hospital. Oh my gosh! So everybody was wondering if he was going to come, and uh, when he arrived, it, it was it was a mystical concert. It was just amazing. Um, that is those type of moments I remember. But the industry event, I, I was going to the the main trade show, whether uh, it's with uh, IMAX or with uh, uh, the uh, Reed uh, portfolio. Um, I'm going to uh, the MPI conference, the PCMA conference, the IAEE conference. Those are the the main one uh, I'm attending. And it's not really one specific event. It's, it's who is attending and the moment you're experiencing the discussion you're having 
during those conferences that really matters to me. Yeah, yeah. So what's the coolest new um, trend or thing you're, you're excited about in, the, in our industry? Oh, it's really the, all the, the technology that allows us to, uh, to engage more mm-hmm. uh, with colleagues, but also to create more engagement during the, uh, the meetings that we're organizing. That is something uh, that finally have a solution for that. But again, it's, it's how you're using that technology, which is the, the most important. But now you have the tools to do that. You're saving a lot of time and you can use different tools based on the objective of, uh, of your client. And that is something that uh, we might not realize because, you know, it's there. But if you think about it and if you think <laughs> even the, uh, the cell phone, uh, how many years that exists, uh, existing, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's not 40 years, not 30 years, not 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So the, it, it's really the, all this new technology that is allowing us to, uh, collaborate more, to take more notes, to remember what, uh, uh, we've been writing or the meetings we had and, and, and taking the, the best part of it. And it, is it, is it hard for you to recommend, um, new technologies to your clients i mean some without you know you really need to test them that seems to be the big you know issue sometimes that i run into is that you know it's sometimes hard to really trust some of this stuff because there's so many things out there now how do you kind of, how do you how do you get how do you kind of comb your way through all this to find stuff do you just i guess research but how how are you doing it uh, again i'm following some people um somebody like uh Corbin Ball or uh, Dalia Algazar, mm-hmm. those are people that uh, are very knowledgeable in what they're doing uh, in, in the technology field. Uh, and then um, I'm, I'm reading what they, they're publishing. I'm talking with them and uh, looking where, what's new and say, oh, we can use this. For instance, the, this microphone, which is in a, in a soft cube oh, yeah. that you just throw at somebody and catch it. It's fun and it's engaging. And you know th- those things are invented uh, every every month, every 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 quarter. There's something new. Yeah. So and again, what is the purpose of that? But um, you cannot do everything yourself. So relying on your network and the people who you are the expert in the field uh, and in this particular uh, case in technology, who are the people I want to read from? I want to learn from. Great, 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 great. Yeah, the catch box. That's the catch box. Huh? Yes. I saw those guys when we were at IMAX. They're, yes. They're yeah. All, they're exactly. They're, yeah. They're, they're, they're all these crazy young Finnish guys. Are they Finnish? I <laughs> yeah, don't know. I think they are. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, anyway, they're very nice. Nice people. They were on the podcast actually too a while back, and they're just great guys. Um, it's cold, so they have to remain uh, inside and find IDs to have fun. So probably. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So last question. So if you could talk to the high school you. Um, what would you tell yourself? Would you do anything differently in your life? I, I, I would say just do what you want to do, what you feel doing. That's the, that's the, the key to uh, enjoying in life and, and be good uh, at anything you would be doing. It's, it's really follow your guts um, and have the courage to follow your guts. Awesome. All right, Eric. Thank you so much for speaking with me. How can people get a hold of you if they want to contact you? Um, again, my, my Twitter handle is Yoda 18 and the b- best way to reach me is probably through email, uh, which is Eric at Swantegy.com and Eric is E R I C at, uh, Swantegy is S W A N T E G Y.com. Eric at Swantegy.com. So tell me too, what's the name come from? Ha, the name comes from, uh, we wanted to change name back in 2008, 2009, because we will call INS and TIFE, which is incentive in, in French and Flemish. And obviously, that was uh, not the, the only thing we were doing, not the, the perfect timing for that. And we were discussing one day with some people and said, okay, what is it that we do? We help people executing their strategy. So strategy. And what we do is like, it's like a swan. It's a, you know, it's a beautiful bird. It's calm above the water and it's paddling like crazy under the water when you don't see that. And that's what we do for our client. So uh, I took Swan Strategy, then Swan Strategy, Swantegy. I went on Google. There were there was zero occurrence, and I said, "Okay, that's it." <laughs> perfect, perfect. All right, Eric. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. 
And uh, thank you. And I look forward to having you back on the show again later on to hear what you're up to. Okay, well, thanks. That was uh, very interesting to talk to Eric. Thank you, Eric, for being on the show. Wanted to um, reiterate to thank our sponsors, 99designs. Go on over there and get some graphics made, uh, get some creative stuff going. That's at tinyurl.com, meetings backward slash meetings 99. That's tinyurl.com backward slash meetings 99. That's 99designs. Thank you, 99designs. And then, of course, audible.com. Uh, if you're not listening to audiobooks, I would recommend giving it a try, as I said earlier. Um, really enjoy listening to them while I'm doing stuff. Uh, you can go over to audibletrial.com backward slash meetings podcast and get a free audiobook and try it out. So thank you again. Really appreciate you listening to the show, making it this far to the end of the show. Um, I encourage you to have a fantastic day because uh, that's what I like to do. So I will see you next time and thank you for listening to me, Eric. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the Meetings Podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com. <laughs>